Hello, good day and welcome to my YouTube channel again. Um, unfortunately, today is not the brightest of days. Um, this climate change issue is really affecting fish farmers a lot. Um, I mean, much more than ever before, we have discovered that, you know, the water, the rain we were expecting, you know, the rain we were expecting has not yet come, you know, it has changed our farming pattern, it has changed our seasonal, you know, our seasonal expectations and it's really affecting us because the quantity of fish that we could put in our ponds before, we can't put them anymore. Also, you should understand that some of us, you know, um, based on um, our previous farming cycles, we try to site our fish ponds in areas where, you know, we use water, we use water channels, we use rivers, we use streams. Those streams aren't flowing anymore because the water isn't coming, because the rain isn't coming. So it's affecting us in a number of ways. But what I want to do today, rather than talk about the problem, rather than talk about the problem, let's start practicing climate resilient agriculture, right? So our streams are not flowing anymore, you know. Um, ordinarily, what we used to have here is water flowing in from the, you can see that this is a river bank. So water flowing in from the river into our ponds, you know, and then going out the other way. Or unfortunately, that is not been the case right now. Ordinarily, let me show you where the water used to go out from. So, as I was show, talking, as I was explaining to you earlier, normally we used to have water, the rain fall water coming through there, and then go out through our chamber here, all right, and go out here. But as you can see, the whole place is dry right now. And um, so I mentioned that five tips that I'm going to share with you on how to be climate resilient. Number one is that if you have not sighted your fish farm, site your fish farm beside a river, beside a dam, beside a water body, in a marshy environment. All right. Don't fish is culture of uh, aquaculture is culture of living organisms inside water. So try to get the most um, water-laden environment you can. It is a competitive advantage for your business. Number two, um, if, you are site, if you are making your ponds, make a reservoir, all right, where you can harvest rainwater, all right, where you can harvest rainwater. Sometimes you might need to line it with tarpaulin. I'll show you a video, maybe the next video I'll do, I'll show you a video of where we lined and collect rainwater so that we can use them to supplement our ponds, all right? So this is before we line the pond. As you can see, we have we've put the liners in the pond. We will just be getting set to line the pond with tarpaulin because the soil is bad, all right? So um, I'll show you another video once we are done. So as you can see, we are about to line pond three. We're still going to other ponds, all right? But um, you can look at behind me now. You can see we've lined these two ponds. So you can see that's that, and this is this that we have lined with liners. So, can... so I just put in this clip into this video for you to see what you can do in any place where the soil is not retaining water or where the water is not uh, is dried up completely. So this is a fish. I will take you back to the video right now. Number three is that you want to make sure you are looking at rain patterns. You are looking at NIMET data. If you are in Nigeria, there is a NIMET organization that releases rainfall patterns throughout the year. So you want to make sure that that's something you are looking at, you are watching to observe if in your location you will have as much rainfall as you expect. Number four is that you should actually collect your own data. You should write down days and intensity of rainfall in your area. That will help you predict the next coming months. And also the next year you can look and see the patterns that you have observed. Alright, great. Um, so let me walk with you and show you. So, yes, um, this is um, probably not the most economic idea, seeing as we try to use an earthen pond here. But as you can see, we've dug a bowl to make sure that we can artificially supply water to our pond. Now, the trick to a bowl in a fish farm is that you want to dig an industrial bowl. Now, if you are like me, a popular, if you are like me and you've been a fish farmer for so long, you know that we usually have issues with um, the geologists who are the bowl drillers. Why is that? Most times they always drill a, a consumer bowl, a household bowl, all right? And so they dig um, 30 meters, they put a one horsepower pumping machine, and it's fine for them. And really, water just come out, all right? And it fills their 2,000 liter tank. You understand? They are fine. 
For me, this is my earthen pond here. It takes about 100,000 liters of water. All right, so if I'm going to fill this up with a bowl, the way I'm thinking is different. All right, I want probably a three horsepower pumping machine inside my bowl. I want, if I can use a surface pump, the better. If I can, um, you know, and I need the water coming out so well. So this is something you have to discuss with your geologist before he brings his machine. Of course, it is more expensive. I mean, the bowl with drug here is, is a million plus, all right? But um, it's something that you would need in the long run with dealing with these climate issues, all right? So um, discuss with your geologist. Make sure he comes to do a test and make sure he can drill his bowl to the depth that he can install such a pumping machine. And also the pipe coming out from the bowl, make sure it's not one inch pipe, all right? Because you're going to reduce it, reduce it, reduce it. So at least a two, a two inch pipe coming out from the bowl will suffice to bring the water out. And then from there you can reduce into that, all right? So great, I've spoken about collecting water. I've spoken about siting your fish farm appropriately. I've spoken about using NIMET data. I've spoken about you collecting your own data. I've spoken about you installing your own bowl. I should also mention that now, let us do our fishes in manageable batches, all right? So if your farm used to do 5,000 fishes in at a go before and probably raise them for one year, I would advise you stagger your production now. You should, you should do maybe 1,000 1, every month or 500 every month so that that way you can manage the ponds that you keep them. Do you understand? So if ordinarily the stocking density of my pond is about 4,000 fishes, right now because I know that I won't get the same volume of water to replace the spent volume of water, I'll reduce the stocking density I, I, I usually do or that I can in that pond because now I know that water is a challenge all right so you want to do your fishes in batches also let me tell you once you ever have issues with your fishes get a smoking kiln process your fishes all right process your fishes that way those fishes will not die you know because the water is not good or conducive you've processed your fishes your processed fishes will not keep eating fish will not keep eating feed will not keep needing water change and so with that i mean once you reach the peak that you know that your pond can take Rather than continuing to grow out the fishes, just stagger them, process the fishes, and sell it as processed fish. So yeah, those are some of the tips. I hope you've subscribed to my YouTube channel. Those are some of the tips that you can use to be, make sure that your farm is climate resilient. And um, of course, we keep looking at more opportunities, more, more, more innovation. I know that there are solar pumping machines out right now. That's something I'm exploring. And once I collect more data, I'll share with you, all right? But once again, my name is Akin Fish. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can like the post. You can share it with your friends and drop your questions below. I'll answer all your questions. I'm taking the questions one by one, all right? I'm still answering all the questions. So drop all your questions below and I will get to them. Bye.